Hey everybody, God bless you. I'm so glad you joined me tonight. I hope you had a great day today. I hope your day was blessed. I want to uh, just say hi to everybody. Welcome back to Living Faith Online and just tell all of you, our subscribers, our visitors, and my Living Faith family, mwah, bless you. God bless you. I love you. Uh, I've got um, some announcements to share um, if you go to attend Living Faith. Um, and then, um, and then we're going to get into the word of God. You know, um, uh, when I'm texting somebody, you ever been texting somebody and, you know, it's going quite a bit of going back and forth texting. And sometimes with that, when that happens with me, with somebody, I might say, uh, one more thing, you know, cause we've been communicating so much. So I'll say one more thing. Well, tonight is kind of my one more thing, at least for now regarding the grace of God, regarding the grace of God. And I entitled tonight's message, Amazing Grace, Amazing Grace. And I want to share with you um, two examples, two amazing examples of the grace of God and the power of God in our lives, working in their lives. And we can see that it'll work in our lives. And so uh, I'm just going to uh, uh, get into that for a few minutes and share it with you, okay? I hope it blesses you like it blessed me. Well, I've got a couple of announcements. First of all, this coming Saturday, we're having our women's small group. So that will take place this coming Saturday from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. That's our women's small group. I wanted to let you all know about that. And then, of course, we're gearing up. Today is December 6th, so we're getting ready for our New Year's Eve service. It's going to be combined service with Pastor Robert Randolph Davis and me and Living Faith Congregation and Abundant Life uh, Family Church Congregations taking place on New Year's Eve. We're going to bring in 2024 together, the year of the open door. So we're, you know, we plan on having a lot of fun. The dress is semi-formal and uh, there's no child care, uh, by the way. But we're looking forward to just having some fun. And this will be our first New Year's, I think, since uh, COVID, actually. So we're excited about that as well. So if you want to join us, come on out um, for our New Year's Eve service, all right, on December 31st. We're still having 10 a.m. Uh, morning service, and then we're coming back at 9 p.m. 9 p.m., we start with photos, photos and um uh, light refreshments and, and fellowship. And then the service actually begins at 10 p.m. to 12 um, to 12. And we'll bring in the new year. Okay. Well, um, again, the, t uh, the topic, we're still talking about amazing grace. I also, I must apologize. A couple weeks ago, um, I had, I was making a comparison between Apostle Paul and Apostle Peter. And, you know, after, um, during the course of the week, that kept coming up to me. And uh, I had mentioned that uh, Paul was graced by God to minister to the Gentiles. And Peter, the apostle Peter, was graced to preach to the, uh, to the Jews. And that is true. But I, I had said that apostle Peter was a Gentile preaching to the Jews. And apostle, apostle Paul was a, a Jew uh, who was called to minister to the Gentiles. And that is not correct. Uh, Apostle Paul, he, he was graced to preach to the Jews, that is correct. And Apostle uh, Peter, he was graced by God to preach to uh, the Gentiles. However, the Apostle Peter was a Jew. He was a Jewish fisherman. So he was not a, he was not a Gentile. And I, and I, and I knew that, but uh, I just have to chalk it up to, you know, sometimes we're so uh, interested in making a point that you just like lose your mind and lose your doctrine or something. So, but uh, the Holy Spirit had me look that up, you know, and, um, and of course, Jesus called Peter while he was a fisherman. So he was Jewish. He was not a Gentile. He was called and graced by God to preach to the Gentiles. So I wanted to make sure I... Um, made you aware, some of you, you already knew, probably thinking, um, okay, she really missed that one. So I just want to apologize for that and, um, and scratch that. Okay. <laughs> so, 
but they are they were both graced to to preach the gospel to uh, the people that God called them, them to preach to. Well, Father, we just thank you and we praise you. And Father, we thank you tonight for your grace. Your grace. We, we, we thank you so much for all that you do, all that you've given us to, to live life and to live life abundantly, to live life, life successfully. Father, we take, thank you for your word tonight. Um, Father, I pray that you would bless this word and bless this time together in the word. Father, we know that no time put into your word is ever wasted, never wasted. So we just thank you. We thank you. Uh, I, I thank you, God, ahead of time that our faith will be increased tonight after uh, looking at the scriptures and that we'll be encouraged uh, and motivated to just trust you at a whole different level and to, to get back on the bandwagon if we've been discouraged about anything. So, Father, we just thank you. We praise you. We thank you for your divine and supernatural help. In Jesus' name, amen. And so, speaking of supernatural help, we have found out that grace is supernatural help. Ephesians 2, it says that we are saved by grace through faith. Somebody say that's supernatural. Salvation is a supernatural, miraculous act of God, amen, or operation of God. Um, and so, so we see, based on that scripture, Ephesians 2, 8, that since we're saved by grace, where grace, God used grace, it was the power of his grace uh, that he extended towards us to cause us to become a new creature in God. Christ that caused us, it contained the power, the grace of God contained the power to uh, uh, bring us from death to life. So that is supernatural. The grace of God is so necessary. It's so powerful. It's so supernatural for our lives. And um, I'm not sure if I mentioned the title, but I, I entitled this Amazing Grace. I won't sing the song. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. You know, we, most of us have heard that song before. But, of course, that song comes to me with, with this title. But, um, again, I'm just going to share some examples with you. So, let's get into the Word of God. I want to read 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 10 in the Passion Translation, okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 12 in the Passion Translation. And this, we went over these scriptures before. Uh, please, if, if this is the first time you're listening to uh, my message on grace, go back three weeks ago for part one and then part two. And then we had healing, which was last week, the last Wednesday of the month, and then uh, tonight. So... Uh, this is my one more thing, all right? I, I think, I, I'm, I'm, I'm almost sure it is for, for this time. Uh, so 2 Corinthians chapter 12, starting verse 7 in the Passion Translation, and it says, the extraordinary level of the revelations I've received, this is Apostle Paul and his thorn in, thorn in the flesh. The extraordinary level of the revelations I've received is no reason for anyone to exalt me. For this is why a thorn in my flesh was given to me, the adversary's messenger sent to harass me, keeping me from becoming arrogant. Wow. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to relieve me of this, but he answered me, my grace is sufficient. I'm sorry, my grace, the, the uh, King James Version says sufficient, but the Passion Translation says, my grace is always more than enough for you. Wow, my grace is always more than enough for you. And my power finds its full expression, right? My and, and this is the Lord speaking to Paul. And my power finds its full expression through your weakness, okay? So it's not until we come face to face with our weakness that we engage the grace of God, the supernatural grace and power of God in our lives. Uh, and so it says that um, my power finds its full expression through your weakness. So I will celebrate my weakness for when I am weak, I sense more deeply the mighty power of Christ living in me. This is so powerful. 
so I'm not defeated by my weakness. <laughs> wow. I'm, so I'm not defeated by my weakness, but delighted. For when I feel my weakness and endure mistreatment, when I'm surrounded with troubles on every side and face persecution because of my love for Christ, I am made yet stronger. For my weakness becomes a portal. Listen, it. a portal is an opening. A portal is an entrance. A, a portal is a door. He says, for my weakness becomes a portal to God's power. Uh, now, I, I need y'all to go back and read this after, you know, uh, later to read this for yourself and really, really look at this. This is so powerful. These verses are so powerful and it brings, uh, the Passion Translation brings such a great light to this. So, so, so what we can see here is Paul was focusing on his inability to do something. A weakness is, the word a weakness in the Greek it means the inability to produce results. It means to be want to be in want of strength. And so Paul is saying, um, once the Lord spoke to him, then Paul realized that his weakness, look, for my weakness becomes a portal or an open door to God's power. So it's okay. It's okay when we have a weakness. It's okay we, when we find ourselves in the position to have the inability to produce results, where we can't produce results by ourselves. So what does that mean? We, we realize we have a weakness. We realize we, we're in need of strength, but praise the Lord. We, have, we can receive, open the door. We can just let our weakness. So, so, I mean, it's just powerful that we realize that our weakness won't be something to stop us. But our weakness will give us access to the grace and to the supernatural power of God. That is just awesome. Just, just beautiful. Amen. I'm also going to read. Um, so go back and read that yourself later. And then 1 Corinthians, uh, I, I made a, a comment here. Therefore, the great, based on those verses, therefore, the grace of God is sufficient for all human needs. That includes ours, not just Paul. Just because Paul's in the Bible doesn't mean that it doesn't apply to us or, or it doesn't mean that he's the only one. And so, again, instead of, our, instead, of us our back, instead of us backing up because of our weakness, we need to be determined to move forward because of our weakness. Because our weakness, when we let our weakness not defeat us, but to let our weakness be an opening and give us access to the grace of God. I'm going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 15. So uh, again, the grace of God is sufficient for all human needs. Let, let me share this definition with you. Um, uh, now, over the years, now, I don't know whether Dr. Lamont came up with this definition or not. I don't know, but we give him credit for it. Maybe he learned that in Bible college. I don't know, but it sure helps me the fact that the grace of God, come on y'all living faith people, you know, you know, you should know this by now that the grace of God is God's empowering presence, enabling us, his empowering presence, enabling us to be who God created us to be so that we can do what God has uh, called us to do so that we can have what God has created us to have. Amen. And so, um, so that, Th that just ministers to me. So 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 9 and 10. 1 Corinthians uh, verses 9 and 10. And it says, um, let, me, let me find it here. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 9 and 10 in the Passion Translation. And it says here, I'm going to read that. So this is Paul. He was talking about, um, uh, he says in verse 9, he says, yes. He says, I am the most insignificant of all the apostles, unworthy even to be called an apostle because I hunted down believers and persecuted God's church. But God's amazing grace has made me who I am and his grace to me or towards me and his grace to me was not fruitless. In fact, I worked harder than all the rest. 
yet not in my own strength. Listen, Paul saying, and he, he felt as though he had the right to say he worked harder than all these other people that they were talking about. You know, um, he said, I worked harder than all the rest. He says, yet not in my own strength, but in God's for his empowering grace, his empowering grace, his empowering grace grace is poured out upon me. So Paul was uh, almost bragging here, but you know, uh, uh, hey, if if we're going to brag, the, the scripture says, if, we, if we're going to brag, let's brag in God. Amen. So he's, he's bragging about because he was graced to do what he was called to do and, and what he did in ministry, all the great things he did in ministry, he's bragging. He said, look, I did, I worked harder than all them guys, right? He says, but he says, but it was not in my own strength. Come on, y'all. We're called to do what God has called us to do, which is our discovery. <laughs> I remember Dr. Lamont used to say, your purpose is not your choice. Is that how we said it? Uh, our purpose is not our choice. It's our discovery. In other words, we don't decide, oh, well, let me be this, or I'm a be of that, or, you know, where we just think the whole world is our, um, you know, the whole world is our stage. When we need to find out, we need to discover what God's purpose is for us, what he has called us to do, amen, and to be. So um, Paul was saying, but it was the grace of God that was empowering him. Um, and uh, again, that's just to reinforce that we want to be partakers of the grace of God. Amen. So um, according to the Thompson Chain um, version of the Bible, it says that grace, divine grace, you know, when I teach healing, I make the distinction, make sure that I make the distinction between divine healing and healing or man's, man's uh, medicine. But divine healing means that it comes from God's power. It's accomplished through God's power. So I'm saying that to say divine grace. Because we can have people's favor. We can have the favor of people. But we're talking about having the favor of God. Amen. Um, so uh, it says that divine grace, it's unmerited favor that's available to number one, the sinner for salvation. And number two, to the redeemed or the believer for victorious living. Okay, so grace helps in two areas. We already talked about Ephesians 2, 2, 8, where it says, for by grace we are saved through faith, and that it's supernatural, it's a supernatural operation <coughs> that causes a sinner to become born again and become the righteousness of God, like we were, amen? And so grace does that. It, 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 it's a matter of favor, favor that's available to the sinner for salvation <coughs> and to the redeemed that's us somebody say that's me i'm the redeemed let the redeemed of the lord say so i'm redeemed and 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 then grace is unmerited favor that's available a merit unmerited favor and supernatural power supernatural strength Paul told Timothy, he said, my son, be strong in the grace that's in Christ Jesus. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And so that grace, that strength and that power from God, it's given to the believer for victorious living. So it's not, it doesn't stop. The power of God and the, the grace of God does not stop its functioning and its, um, and its power and effectiveness just to get us born again. The grace of God is designed and given to us if we will recognize it and receive it. That's why I'm teaching on that, so that we can recognize the grace of God, uh, to recognize we're not on our own. We're not doing this by ourselves, but we need God's grace. And that's why Paul called on the Lord, and the Lord answered him and told him, I got you covered. I got you covered, my son. And so the grace of God will cause you and I to uh, live a victorious life, to live a victorious life. That's what it's all about, to live a victorious life. And um, so, um, so, you know, we, we see that the grace of God is, is just powerful. Amen. 
um, I, I was going to cover, you know, Acts chapter 4, 13. It talked about how they watched how uh, Barnabas, uh, let's see who it was. Uh, let's see what version. Acts 4, 13, where the people, Acts 4, 13, Peter and John, um, when they, around the time they were arrested, 4, 13, it says, now when, Acts 4.13, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. And uh, again, I, I covered this a couple of weeks ago to recognize that these people, they recognized that even though Peter and John were uneducated and untrained men, these people, they still recognized and perceived that they had been with Jesus. Why? Because of the power and because of the grace that was on them. So it was undeniable, even though they may not have been who they would have picked to be um, delegates and, and um you know, preachers of the gospel, but look, God qualifies the called, amen? So he qualifies all of us, all of us that have been called. So so my point, my point here is that they saw the grace of God. They saw the grace of God that was on them. So the grace of God can be seen. I've talked about this plenty uh, during these uh, three weeks, today including the third and, um, and that the grace of God on our lives can be seen. And again, I use the example of Pastor Lamont, the grace of God being on him and making, um, making you know, he, he was anointed. He, he, you could tell he was anointed and you could tell that the grace of God was on him and he actually made ministry seem easy. Now he worked, that man worked, he studied, he was a workaholic, amen. And um, so, so he did his, uh, he, he put in his time and, and his efforts and, uh, but he made, he could make ministry look easy, but that was because of the grace of God, because he was called to do what he did. And so the grace of God, he was graced to do it and it made it look easy and it made it easy. Actually, I'm sure he thought, thought himself like, wow, I don't even know how I'm doing this. Uh, I know uh, when um, there was a time where we had Saturday night service and three and three uh, Sunday morning services, and um, and um, we were uh, so then one Saturday, Pastor Lamont was sitting in the family room and he was just sitting and looking out the window and thinking real deep, you know, just looking out into the backyard. And I said, "What are you thinking about?" And he said. Um, I'm um, just thinking about how, um, you know, how uh, we had Saturday night service and then three Sunday morning services. And he, he was saying, he said, I don't know how I did it because we had moved to a bigger building so we didn't have to do all those things. We didn't have to do all those services, rather. So he was just, uh, you know, he was just chilling, you know, because he had extra time. And he said, I, he said I don't know how I did all that. And I, t I told him, I said, it was because the grace of God was on you. The, the grace of God was on you to do that. And then he just continued to sit there. And I don't know whether he glanced at me for a second, but he said, mm. he said, I don't want that grace anymore. Isn't that something? And he did all that. I mean, he was working. Um, Saturday night service, three Sunday morning services. That's hard on a person's body. It's hard on their mind, right? Um, and uh, But he said, well, then I don't want that grace anymore. And I thought to myself, well, I probably said, well, honey, thank God you don't have to do that anymore. So, so what am I saying? The grace of God, he didn't need that grace, not that particular grace to hold four services in one weekend. But that goes to show you the power of the grace of God, the power of the grace of God. And so... Perhaps we can say that that grace was lifted. Uh, we can say that that grace was temporary, however we want to put it. 
But it, it wasn't, he got to a place where we just had one service, one morning service, because we could fit everybody in one sanctuary, and then he didn't need that grace anymore. That is the power of the grace of God. And that grace will come on us. It'll come on all of us. The grace of God will help all of us to do what we've been called to do and what we have to do. There are some things that we just have to do. You know, we're responsible for certain things. And the grace of God will come and enable us to do it. And come on, somebody say, God, I thank you for your grace. And when your grace comes on me, that it will cause what I'm doing to look easy and not just to look easy, but to be easy. Thank you, Jesus. I want to share two examples with you, and I want you to go to YouTube and look up these two people. I want to give you their uh, names first. Number one, I want to look at a woman called, named Joni Erickson Tada. Now, you may know her. Her name is Joni Erickson Tada, and uh, she has a testimony where uh, she was in a diving accident and her spinal cord was severed and it uh, turned her into a quadriplegic. So she doesn't have the use of her arms. I mean, she has braces that keeps her arms uh, where she can express herself, uh, but she can't use her arms. Um, and so she, uh, she, she was, it was right after she graduated from high school and she, uh, broke her neck and severed her um, spinal cord when she dove into shallow water. And she became a quadriplegic. And um, I, um, what made me bring up these two people, and then I finally went and listened to at least her testimony, but it made me just think, you know, teaching on grace and looking at grace, and sometimes we want to feel sorry for ourselves, and we think what we're going through is so hard, and, and, and then these people, these two examples, it, we can see that God's grace is amazing. It's amazing. Amazing God who gives us amazing grace. And so now this woman, she's a quadriplegic, right? And so she, I, I wrote this down. She said, uh, she said she would wake up every day and say, Jesus, I can't do this thing called life. Listen, and this is what got me thinking. I thought about her. I put myself mentally in her shoes. And then I went and watched her video, you know, just to imagine what it's like to be a quadriplegic. And we're complaining about stuff. We, you know, most of us listening tonight, when, you know, we don't have anything that hard to struggle with like, like she does. And so she said she would wake up every morning and say, Jesus, I can't do this thing called life. Please help me. Please show up. Give me your smile. Give me your strength because I can't make it through the day. She said, uh, she said, um, or she said that she earnestly, uh, she began to earnestly depend on God's grace every moment. Listen, so this woman will wake up to a reality every day that she was a quadriplegic and she could do nothing on her own not even normal, regular life stuff. Somebody had to help her do everything. And she even mentioned when I listened to her video, and it's on YouTube, it's called Joni Erickson, Erickson Tata Shares Her Testimony. Uh, that's the title of the video, and it's on YouTube. And um, she even mentioned how when she got her fancy wheelchair, she remembers when she first was riding in her uh, this fancy wheelchair and she thought to herself just for a moment, she said, you know what, I could just take off these brakes and just run, just run out into the street and it'll all be over, right? And, and that's what I was thinking. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, how would some of us think, Lord, just take me out of here. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. Amazing grace. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. She said, I don't want to do this thing. I can't do this thing called life. But then she, she learned to rely on the grace of God to get her through every day. This woman paints. She paints. Now I'm talking about us complaining about stuff. She paints with her mouth. She puts the, uh, 
the paintbrush in her mouth. She painted this beautiful picture. She was inspired by Van Gogh's, I think, The Three Kings, and she painted a, a picture on her own with her mouth, and it's beautiful. She paints with her mouth. Come on, y'all. That is the grace of God and nothing else. The grace of God and nothing else. So surely if the grace of God can get this woman through every day, and she's married, she's married. She has a wonderful husband, and she preaches. So she's not sitting in the dark. She's not sitting in the corner, in the dark, in her house wallowing in self-pity. She had other opportunities, I'm sure, after that to kill herself, to let herself go out in traffic because she couldn't really rescue herself. You know, she could have done that, but she didn't do that. She decided that she was going to daily rely on the grace of God to live the fullest life that she could live, a paraplegic. The second example is a man named Nick Vigicic. His name is Nick, and his last name is V-U-J-I-C-I-C. -I -I -C. And, um, let me, I'm sorry. And um, he is, this man, I don't know his story, how he got in the condition that he's in, but he is, he has no arms up to his shoulder. He has no legs, maybe the top of his, maybe the very top of his thighs. He has no arms, no legs, and he's got one foot with no ankle, and it flips. And it's got two or three toes. His name is Nick Vujicic. Um, And so basically, this man is a torso. All he has is his torso and his head. He's, and both of these people, you know, they minister together sometime. They both minister to crowds. They, they go out and encourage other people. And both of these people have great personalities. They have sense of humor. Uh, I, I remember Nick, he said that his mother said, when he was very young, he said, if God has a plan for Jody Erickson, then God's got a plan for you. That's what his mother told him. The man is a torso. That means every that means everybody has to pick him up, put him in the car, put him on the table. Sometimes he preaches from a table. Now he can get around with his one foot. He can he's learned to use that one foot and maneuver around on a table or a platform. Should I say that? I've seen him on a table and a platform, like a stage. The man is married with, I haven't checked lately, he's married with at least one child. He, I think he has more than one child. What we're going through and, and needing to rely on the grace of God is nothing, nothing compared to what they've experienced. I don't know whether this man, Nick, whether he was a victim of thalidomide, you know, years ago, uh, there was a drug that they were giving people, uh, they were giving mothers for morning sickness, just, just horrible, just a horrible, horrible thing. They were, they gave women, uh, pregnant women, this drug called thalidomide for morning sickness, morning sickness. Now, if those women had known that that drug was going to cause their babies to be born deformed and without limbs. They would have dealt with their morning sickness. It's just a horrible, just a horrible thing in life. But anyway, so I don't know whether that's how he, uh, I, I remember Joni comparing herself to Nick. You know, she became paralyzed at 18. So she knew what it was like to be independent and and physical, and physically fit, but he was born that way. Um, so these people, they're out preaching to other people. I mean, if you go on YouTube, you can see the things that they preach about, you know, and they also, um, they shared in a video together that uh, they are 
um, they are images of God. They're called to be images of God. And thank God that the image of God isn't the physical person. It's who the, who is what they represent. It's who they are on the inside. It's, it's who God has called them to be. And it's just, it's just amazing. It's just amazing. Just amazing. So I just wanted to share those things. I encourage you to go look into their lives, and um, I'm sure you'll be blessed. Um, you know, uh, again, both of these people, I mean, I, I watch them, and they, they both travel and, and preach. Again, they could have just, they could just, they could have just sat life out, but the grace of God is so powerful, so powerful. It makes them, it made them want to live and able to live. And not only that, but to bless other people. And it's just so powerful. Um, I'll just read my notes. Both of them have great personalities. They both have a sense of humor. And um, I, I just believe that, um, you know, when you watch these two amazing people, that'll just encourage you to believe in the amazing grace of an amazing God. Father, we just thank you and we praise you. Father, you, we thank you that you've given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. Father, we ask for your grace for today. To live today and tomorrow, we'll get more grace to do what we have to do tomorrow. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that we would all just be more thankful, that we would all be more faithful, that we would all rely on you more and more. God, that we would be convinced that you want us to be victorious in life, no matter what is happening. Father, I thank you for these two examples and Sister Joni and Brother Nick. Father, thank you for how you've manifested in their lives in such a great way that they encourage us to receive your grace, to pray for your grace, to rely on your grace. And I know sometimes, Father, even us, you know, we've been in situations where we thought we couldn't do this thing called life, but we can. And we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And we thank you, Lord Jesus. We bless you. Well, everybody, I love you. And I'll see you next week. Have a great rest of the week. Bye.